Hey, we are in Exodus now, uh, 23 and 24, We're still talking a little bit about guidelines and what God would have uh, the Hebrew people do and how they would live. And so we'll just jump right into it and uh, knock out these two chapters and see what God has to say in preparation for them. 23. Don't spread harmful rumors or help a criminal by giving false evidence. Always tell the truth in court, even if everyone else is dishonest and stands in the way of justice. And don't favor the poor because simply because they're poor. If you find an ox or a donkey that is wandered off, take it back to where it belongs, even if the owner is your enemy. If a donkey is overloaded and falls down, you must do what you can to help even if it belongs to someone who doesn't like you. Make sure that the poor are given the equal justice in court. Don't bring false charges against anyone or sentence an innocent person to death. I won't forgive you if you do. Don't accept bribes. Judges are blinded and justice is twisted by bribes. Don't mistreat foreigners. You were foreigners in Egypt and you know what it is like. I see all of those, it's common sense, right? But not everybody follows that. Verse 10. Plant and harvest your crops for six years, but let the land rest during the seventh year. The poor are to eat what they want from your fields, vineyards, olive trees during that year. And when they have all they want from your fields, leave the rest for wild animals. Work the first six days of the week, but rest and relax on the seventh day. The law is not only for you, but for your own donkey, donkeys and oxen and slaves, as well as for any foreigners among you. Make certain that you obey everything I have said. Don't pray to other gods or even mention their names. Celebrate three festivals each year in my honor. Celebrate the festival of thin bread by eating bread made without yeast, just as I commanded. Do this at the proper time during the month of Abib, because it is the month when you left Egypt. And make certain that everyone brings the proper offerings. Celebrate the harvest festival each spring when you start harvesting your wheat and celebrate the festival of shelters each autumn when you pick your fruit. Your men must come to these three festivals each year to worship me. Do not offer bread made with yeast when you sacrifice an animal to me and make sure that the fat of the animal is burned that same day. Each year bring the best part of your harvest to the place of worship. Don't boil a young goat in its mother's milk. I am sending an angel to protect you and to lead you into the land I have already I have already for you. Carefully obey everything the angel says because I am giving him complete authority and he won't tolerate rebellion. If the if you faithfully obey him, I will be a fierce enemy of your enemies of your enemies. My angel will lead you into the land of the Amorites, the Hittites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hivites, and Jebusites, and I will wipe them out. Don't worship their gods to follow follow their customs. Instead, destroy their idols and shatter their stone images. Worship only me, the Lord your God. I will bless you with plenty of food and water and keep you strong. Your woman will give birth to healthy children, and everyone will live a long life. I will terrify those nations and make your enemies so confused that they will run from you. I will make the Hivites, Canaanites, and the Hittites panic as you approach. But I won't do all of this in the first year because the land would become poor and the wild animals would be everywhere. Instead, I will force out your enemies little by little and give your nation time to grow strong enough to take over the land. I will see that your borders reach from the Red Sea to the Euphrates River and from the Mediterranean Sea to the desert. I will let you defeat the people who live there and you will force them out of the land. But you must not make any agreements with them or with their gods. Don't let them stay in your land. They will trap you into sinning against me and worshiping their gods. Chapter 24. The Lord said to Moses, come up to me on this mountain, bring along Aaron as well as his two sons, Nadib and Abihu, and 70 of Israel's leaders. They must worship me at a distance, but you are to come near and don't let anyone else come up. Moses gave the Lord's instructions to the people and they promised, we will do everything the Lord has commanded. Then Moses wrote down what the Lord had said. The next morning, Moses got up early. He built an altar at the foot of the mountain and set up a large stone for each of the 12 tribes of Israel. Now remember the 12 tribes of Israel are the sons of Jacob, you know, Joseph and, and all of them, and Joseph's two sons. 
He also sent some young men to burn offerings and to sacrifice bulls as special offerings to the Lord. Moses put half of the blood from the animals into bulls and sprinkled the rest on the altar. And then he read aloud the Lord's commands and promises. And the people shouted, we will obey the Lord and do everything he has commanded. Moses took the blood from the bulls and sprinkled it on the people. Next, he told them, with this blood, the Lord makes his agreement with you. Moses and Aaron, together with Nadib and Abihu and the 70 leaders, went up the mountain and saw the God of Israel. Under his feet was something that looked like a pavement made out of sapphire, and it was as bright as the sky. Even though these leaders of Israel saw God, he did not punish them, so they ate and drank. The Lord said to Moses, come up on the mountain and stay here for a while. I will give you the two flat stones on which I have written the laws that my people must obey. Moses and Joshua, his assistant, got ready. Then Moses started up the mountain to meet with God. Moses had told the leaders, wait here until we come back. Aaron and Hur will be with you and they can settle any arguments while we are away. When Moses went up on Mount Sinai, a cloud covered it, and the bright glory of the Lord came down and stayed there. The Lord covered the mountain for six days, and on the seventh day, the Lord told Moses to come into the cloud. Moses did so and stayed there 40 days and nights. Forty days and nights to the people, the Lord's glory looked like a blazing fire on top of the mountain. Now, that would have been a sight to see, but you can see the relationship that God had with Moses and dealing with him directly. And what's cool is that the Ten Commandments, it wasn't Moses that wrote those down. It was God that wrote those down. So when we get to see where the Israelites start arguing and worshiping other gods, you got to wonder what in the world are they thinking? Because they saw God. They saw the mountain. They saw the fire. They saw the cloud. They saw the glory of God. And all that was being done, and still they didn't follow. But they didn't have something that we have. And we'll talk about that eventually. But uh, we have it better than the Israelites. I hope you have a great day. Love you.